in order. Uh, we have a special guest. We have an Eagle Scout amongst us. We may have more than one, but this is a newly uh, new Eagle Scout. Uh, Austin Purdue, if you could lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Will the clerk please call the roll? Hare. Here. Hazeltine. Present. Lamb. Here. Rose. Here. Shields. Here. Simpson. Here. Coyne. Here. Reading of the minutes. Mr. President. Mr. Shields. I move that the minutes of the regular meeting of June 27, 2022 is prepared and, prepared and submitted by the clerk be approved. Second. Any discussion on the minutes? Will the clerk please call the roll on the approval of the minutes? Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hair. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Reports of standing committees. The Finance Committee met prior to fin uh, Council this evening. And our next meeting will be August 22nd because we go on break. Health, safety, sanitation, Mr. Simpson. <laughs> thank you, Mr. President. No report, uh, no, no meeting scheduled. Thank you. Public properties, Mr. Shields. Thank you, Mr. President. No report this evening, no meeting scheduled. Special legislation, Mr. Lamb. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I think I gave a pretty lengthy report already, and I have no meeting scheduled. Thank you. Streets and sidewalks, uh, Ms. Hare. Thank you, Mr. President. No report and no scheduled meetings. Thank you. Water and utilities, Mrs. Hazeltine. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, nothing to report and no meeting scheduled at this time. Emerging Technologies, Mr. Rose. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Emerging, Technolo Emerging Technologies Advisory Committee is going to be having a meeting on the 18th of August at 7 or 5.30 uh, here at City Hall. Thank you. Request for council <coughs> action. We have several for the Finance Committee. We have 22-157, 2023 budget, tax budget, 2022-150. 22158 Bulletproof Vest Partnership Grant Police Department, 22159 Grant Application OPWC Medina Street Bridge Replacement, 22160 Gates Mill Boulevard Appropriation Engineering, and 22161 Amend Code Section 50511 Hunting Prohibited. Reports of Municipal Officers. Mayor Hamwell. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. The uh, Friday night band concerts are continuing. Uh, they were all all through the month of uh, June and will continue through July, uh, 8.30 p.m. on Public Square. Uh, they're always weather permitting. If they do cancel it, it'll be on the, uh, the uh, band website as well as the city website. Farmers markets are on the square each Saturday morning. Uh, some square events uh, taking place in the next few weeks are Medina County Arts Week is July 11th through July 15th and they're from noon to one in the afternoon and five to 7.30 p.m. each of those days. Medina Fest is scheduled for July 16th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Art in the Park, July 17th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Big Band Jazz, July 23rd from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And Cars and Coffee, uh, July 24th from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. If uh, public members are interested in city meetings, they can either check the city website or if you uh, contact Kathy Patton at kpatton, P-A-T-T-O-N, at medinoh.org, uh, she'd be happy to add you to the email group that she sends out agendas to. <clears throat> the uh, Great Race uh, was sponsored in the city on June 21st by Hemmings Motor News, Haggerty's Drivers Club, Reliance Carriers Incorporated, and Coker Tire. I'd like to invite up Barbara Dezur, who was the city organizer, to handle the presentation to our local sponsors and volunteers. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're very proud of that. Um, Preparing for the great race uh, was a huge undertaking for the city, and it involved a lot of people working and volunteering to make it all come together seamlessly. So tonight, we'd like to recognize some of those folks and say some thank yous, first of all, to the city staff 
that provided behind the scenes work to make the event possible. This includes police and fire departments, service department, parks department, engineering, community development staff, and the Medina TV staff. Thank you to all of those folks for doing things that um, at some point in time we thought might not get done. <laughs> Um, also, thank you to the Greater uh, Medina Chamber of Commerce uh, for serving as a fiscal agent for the race. Um, that was a, a big relief to have them do that. Tonight, we'd like to recognize local sponsors who stepped up to provide funding for all of the expenses that you incur when you say, yes, you'd like to host a lunch stop for the great race. So as uh, I call your name, if you'd please come forward. Uh, the mayor has a gift for you. Um, from the Cleveland Clinic Medina Hospital, Dr. Richard Schubridge. From Huntington Bank, Mr. Ron Pado. Lloyd's Towing, Mr. Mike King. Medina County Convention and Visitors Bureau, Kathy Brighton Butcher. Homes, um, Homestead Insurance, Brandon Rapp. I didn't see Brandon there come in. There you go, in, uh, <laughs> um, Medina Tax Service, Joan Krejci. Perkins Classic Car Addiction, Curtis Perkins. And the Don Williams Garage, hosted by Don Williams. <laughs> uh, we had other um, sponsors who were unable to be here tonight. <coughs> they include 3M, Carlisle Brake and Friction, Sandridge Food Corp, Summit Racing, Busy Bee Automotive Repair Center, Rad Air, Discount Drug Mart, and Southtown Creative Shop. Thank you to all of you. You made it happen. Thank you. Now there's another group of very special people I'd like to call up, and that's the United Church of Christ congregational staff that helped out. So if all of you would come forward. Um, these folks opened the doors of their church and served lunch to over 300 people in a very short period of time. More importantly, they provided an air-conditioned fellowship hall clean restrooms, and the opportunity for racers to get in and out of the 95 degree heat and rest for a bit. Uh, just to share a personal story, I want to especially, um, I'm grateful to these folks who were still working at 315 in the afternoon. Supposedly all the cars had come and, and were in the process of leaving. And in drives a Hudson Hornet. And there are three young people who have been um, in this Hudson Hornet since they left Erie, PA, and it's now 315. And they're supposed to be well on their way to Perrysburg. But they had a flat tire, and they could not get the wheel cover off of the wheel. Hudson Hornets sit very low to the ground. And so they had to dig a hole in the ground in order to change the tire. And they came in, and uh, Pastor Lyndon can attest to this, they were exhausted, they were dirty, they were covered with dirt from digging this hole. Um, they had started out very early in the morning and they were doing very well till they had the flat tire. So they were in contention and they were just really down. They were having a really bad day. Um, but the church staff was still there, still set up. They got food, they got water, they got encouraging words. And um, I think that really helped to get them on their way. Um, they, they did have to leave in a hurry because the, there's a, uh, a sweep team that comes in at the end of the race. And they can't, they make sure everyone has gone and they couldn't leave till these poor kids got in this Hudson Hornet and got back out. So they rushed through their lunch and they were gonna drive straight through to Perrysburg uh, rather than trying to complete the rest of the race that day. So hopefully they got there and, and they 
did well. But thanks to these folks for being there, and we heard lots of really positive things about our lunch service. So thank you. Okay, last but certainly not least are the volunteers who helped plan and publicize the event, helped get sponsors, and on the day of the event greeted each race car, welcomed them to Medina, presented them with a gift, uh, directed them to lunch and restrooms, which was important, and then provided security for the cars while the race participants took a break. And they did all of this in, again, 95 degree heat on asphalt. Um, so first, I'd like to call up Mike Stone, criminal justice instructor, um, and he had, his co-teacher, Scott Berry, also was there. They brought 12 uh, rising seniors from the Career Center Criminal Justice Program, and I think we have five with us this evening. Um, Devin Douglas, Alexandra Hall, Aliana Lynn, Spencer Pappas, and Jennifer Tarnasnowski. And folks, if you're ever worried about the youth of today, you just have to spend an afternoon working with these young people, and you know everything's going to be okay. Okay. Other, um, now we had some very, uh, very, very helpful, hardworking uh, adult volunteers, probably not as well behaved <laughs> as <laughs> these young people, uh, but if they could also join us. Bob Anthony, Dave Blosser, Bernie Goliath, and Bernie did uh, helped us also with a lot of our uh, public relations. You may have seen him uh, on a show on our TV station with the mayor. Uh, Jim Krejci, the other half of the Krejci family, and Joan, or was a volunteer also. Uh, Stephanie Mueller from the chamber. Mike Nemec, where's Mike? Curtis Perkins is already up here. Uh, Trevor Reed, Jay Reif, and Don Williams was also a volunteer. So as you can see, folks, with you're gonna have 130 Vintage cars come to your town. It takes quite a lot of people to make that happen, and I really appreciate all their help. Thank you.
Okay, last but not least, then, uh, I have one more presentation, and that's for um, Austin Purdue. If, you, if you'd join me up front, sir. <clears throat> this is a, a City of Medina proclamation in recognition of Austin Jeffrey Purdue Eagle Scout. Whereas a congratulations is awarded to Austin Jeffrey Purdue for achieving the highest award in scouting, earning the rank of Eagle Scout. And whereas this award is a result of many years of hard work resulting in outstanding developments in character, leadership ability, citizenship, and physical fitness. Whereas Austin completed a major community service project the hosting of four food drives for Feeding Medina County, specifically focusing on weekender bags and bags for senior citizens. Between the food collection and monetary donations, almost $10,000 was raised. And whereas Austin is to be commended on the determination and dedication he has expended during the years, he has worked toward this goal of becoming an Eagle Scout. And now, therefore, I, Dennis Hanwell, Mayor of the City of Medina, do hereby congratulate Austin for all the hard work he has put forth during the years he has participated in scouting and on his persistence in achieving the highest award in scouting. I know this recognition will always be remembered as a high point in his life, in witness whereof I have hereby set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Medina to be affixed hereto this 11th day of July. 2022. I present this to you, Austin. Thank you, Mr. Durham, Director of Finance. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we have a few items from finance on the on the agenda, the tax budget, and then there's a then and now, and I'll discuss those when we get there. Thank you, Mr. Huber, Law Director. Thank you, Mr. President. I've been working with the building department head, Dan Gladish, in pursuing litigation in the last nine months on a variety of claims against the owners of the property that was formerly Kmart. We recently secured no contest pleas to each of those claims. And some of the, well, quite a few of the property maintenance issues are still not resolved. And Mr. Gladish accordingly filed new claims. These efforts apparently are getting attention because Wednesday we have a meeting with some of the higher ups in the ownership of the, the corporation that manages or fails to manage this property. And hopefully we we'll start to see some movement with, with respect to what will happen there in the near future. Um, I'd like to thank Dan the litigation is uh, problematic and long running, but as a result of the building department's excellent preparation of the case, we've been able to prevail and we'll just continue to try to push the rock up the hill. Thank you. Chief Kinney, Police Department. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Thank you, Mrs. Marshall, Economic Development Director. Thank you, Mr. President. Just to update, um, on our Small Business Workforce Assistance Grant Program. As you will recall, uh, City Council had set aside $200,000 from the American Rescue Plan Act funding that the city received, and uh, that's to assist uh, small businesses with workforce challenges due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So we did roll out the program last week. The program guidelines and the application is now available on the city's website under the economic development section of, of the website. Um, of the $200,000, we have set aside the committee, economic development committee worked on this and they decided that 50,000 of that should be set aside to assist uh, micro businesses. The grant must be used by successful applicants to address issues with hiring, rehiring, and retaining employees. The program will be administered through the Economic Development Department as well as uh, help from the Economic Development Committee. 
A small business for our program is defined as that which has no more than 50 full-time equivalent employees and a micro business has been defined as 10 or fewer employees, one of whom owns the business. All applicants must be located within the city of Medina. Applicants must have experienced negative impacts due to the pandemic. They must be registered with the Ohio Secretary of State and registered with our Regional Income Tax Authority. In addition, in addition, applicants must have active liability insurance and be current on all property taxes and city fees. Program funds can be used for the following expenses related to hiring, rehiring, and retaining of employees as long as the expenses do not violate state or federal laws. Examples include, but are not limited to, uh, the following categories, transportation, child care, training, payroll, and benefits. A couple examples for transportation could be to help uh, purchase Uber rides, bus passes, or car repairs. The program guidelines, as I mentioned, and an online fillable application can be found on the city website at www.medinaoh.org in the economic development section. Completed application and required documentation must be submitted by August 8th of 2022 at 4 p.m. Final selection of the grant recipients will be made from all eligible applications by the City of Medina Economic Development Committee. And if anyone has any questions, they can contact me at 330-764-3319. So that's my update on the grant. And the next item is uh, this Friday, We've got a couple of events scheduled. The first one is a 30th anniversary celebration for Century Cycles located at 875 North Court Street. That's actually a new location. They used to be located in the plaza where the, the former Kmart building is located and uh, they moved out of, out of there to this new uh, site which is the actual Medina Shopping Center. So that uh, 30th anniversary celebration will be at 11 a.m. And then our new business ribbon cutting is for the Monarca Cantina, which is the new Mexican restaurant located at 108 Public Square. Again, these are events are in collaboration with the Medina Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Stephanie. I know you're filling in uh, on Friday for Jacqueline and also with uh, Main Street Medina. So hopefully, uh, if Council, if you're available, we'd love to see you there. Also, First Watch Restaurant, uh, they had a soft opening this weekend. They are officially open to the public today. Uh, we did have an, a chance to go up there on Saturday and the renovations that they did in this site, which was the former Ruby Tuesdays, is absolutely stunning. I think it's going to be a great addition to the city. Uh, the food was delicious. They have a little outdoor patio and um, uh, very nice uh, setup for the seating arrangements. So hopefully all of you will get to uh, visit there soon as well. And that is my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Piccoli, service director. Thank you, Mr. President. I wanted to acknowledge our service guys. They've been coming in every day working, taking care of the day-to-day -day operations in the extremely hot weather. Um, and also, congratulations to Austin. Keep doing great things. Thank you, Mr. Gladys, building official. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Mr. Patton, city engineer. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report this evening. Mr. Worley, Parks and Recreation Director. Thank you, Mr. President. Just a quick update uh, from the rec center. Uh, our matrix selectorized st strength training equipment uh, was recently delivered last week and installed. Uh, the rec staff is available to go over proper use of the equipment, as well as uh, QR codes are on the machines providing instructional videos if you wish to learn yourself. If you haven't been in to check out the rec center recently, I highly, highly encourage you to do so as we've updated uh, a lot of our equipment recently. Um, we have three Party in the Parks events remaining this year. Uh, this Wednesday, July 13th, we'll be at Ray Mellert Park from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. doing a Summer Olympics. July 20th will be at Fred Greenwood Park from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, hosting Christmas in July foam party and July 27th will be at Memorial Park for another Luau pool party from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Chief Walters, Fire Department. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. 
Mr. Dutton, Planning Community <coughs> Development Director. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Thank you. Notices, communications, petitions, we have none. Unfinished business, we have none. <coughs> Introduction of visitors. Members of the public will be permitted the opportunity to speak on any issue or concern which pertains to the city during the portion of the council agenda devoted to introduction of visitors. All comments will be directed to the chair and a reasonable time limit of approximately five minutes will be imposed. If there's a group, please appoint a spokesperson. Speakers should approach the rear right microphone and state their name and address so it can be entered in the minutes. Members of the public will be permitted the opportunity to speak on any issue or concern as determined by the chair by the vote of the majority of members uh, present. Um, prior to opening it up, I have one uh, email that I was asked to read at tonight's meeting because the individual could not make the meeting. Uh, it's as follows. May I add that most people thought that after the June 28, 2022 meeting, the worst was over and we would return to kinder things. How fortunate some discovered this was not so. I feel things will be pursued until the complaints gets their way. So <clears throat> what is the complaint exactly? None has been formally stated by a governing body. I have heard statements of some irrelevant documentation, hearsay, and complaints of deer eating flowers and defecating on lawns. For this, the loudest and angriest group feels all deer should be killed. Members of the community showed up, those that knew, to make statements about the proposals. Shouldn't that be a red flag to council members to react appropriately? I am sure we would like to just let you do your jobs and not interfere, but we cannot. With the statements made by some council people and the over-governing by the same. This calling situation, including feeding the deer and other animals, has gotten nasty and out of hand. Were you elected or appointed for seeking to make new legislations that in most communities opinions are not necessary? I live in a small, by a small city park, mostly wooded. One would think that I would be able to see the 600 plus deer and animals firsthand. Not so, not here. Please leave us and the animals alone. As several have stated, coexist. Shirley Ann Walker at 426 South Broadway Street. Is there anybody else that wishes to address council at this time? Ma'am? Hi, my name is Stacy Benny, 3847 Knott's Landing. Um, I do have been in contact with a lot of people who are against the lethal culling. Um, and I guess I wanted a bit of an explanation, Mr. Coyne, about having the plans voted on through the special legislation and how, because you didn't agree with it, it came back around again to be voted on within two weeks after the decision was made. Well, thank you. An, an additional request for council action was submitted by the mayor and he requested that all members of council have a discussion item on it. And I asked members of council if they wanted to address the issue and they have all agreed. It just seems very suspect that something that was voted on that there were several committee meetings about that the community came out and, and gave their opinion about and was voted down is brought back within two weeks. And if this is the precedent, I would expect to see that going forward as well on other issues. Correct, there were six members of council that wanted to hear it again. Okay, so I know that you've said that this needs to be handled and I'm hearing the opposite from the people in my realm. I'm hearing that we should coexist, that we should try non-lethal versions of trying to control the population. Um, and I'm asking if you can bring this to, put, it, put this on the November ballot. Because I think that some assumptions are being made about what the community wants. And I don't think that's really what the community wants. I'll give you a, a, an example from last fall. Um, I was involved in a lot of school board issues. There were some very contentious school board meetings. There were some very loud people who had some very big opinions about what our children needed to stay safe during the school year because of COVID. I was involved with a very active group of parents who wanted our children to be safe. That was our number one goal. We were called Safe Kids Medina. We organized, we sent a few people to the meetings, we, we we talked about facts, truth, evidence, 
and a school board vote took place in November. And all of the people who made assumptions about what the community wanted, those people were not reelected or elected. So I feel like that's a, a cautionary tale about making assumptions about what the wider community wants without actually talking to the wider community or ignoring the meetings that were in place to discuss the specific issue that people came out to give their feedback to. And I know that emails have been sent to everyone on the committee for not calling, but only emails were brought up about calling. So I know that, that some assumptions are being made. And I would just ask that it be put on the November ballot. Thank you. Anybody else that wishes to address council at this time? Okay, introduction and considerations of ordinances and resolutions. At this time, I'd entertain a motion to suspend the rules requiring three readings on the following ordinances and resolutions. Resolution 132.22, Resolution 133.22, Ordinance 134.22, Ordinance 135.22, Resolution 136.22, Ordinance 137.22, Resolution 138.22, Ordinance 139.22, Ordinance 140.22, Ordinance 141.22, Ordinance 142.22, and Ordinance 143.22. Mr. President. Mr. Shields. I'll make a motion to suspend the rules requiring three readings of tonight's ordinances and resolutions. Second. Any discussion on the motion to suspend the rules? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the motion to suspend the rules? Lamb. No. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coyne. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Motion passes 6-1. At this time, I'd ask Austin Perdue to come up for you. Thank, thank you, yes, I have it. Um, we have a resolution, it's resolution number 13222. It's a resolution congratulating Austin Jeffrey Perdue on attaining the rank of Eagle Scout. Whereas Austin Jeffrey Perdue is currently a member of the Boy Scout Troop number 501. And whereas as a result of considerable hard work in the areas of citizenship, physical fitness, character and leadership development, Austin Jeffrey Perdue will receive his Eagle Scout award, the highest award obtainable in scouting. And now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Medina, Ohio, that the Medina City Council hereby commends Austin Jeffrey Perdue for his outstanding contribution to his community in Boy Scout Troop 501 in obtaining the prestigious rank of Eagle Scout. That a signed copy of this resolution shall be presented to Austin Jeffrey Perdue in recognition of his hard work and dedication in obtaining this award. That this resolution shall be in full force and effect at the earliest period allowed by law. Mr. Coyne. Mr. Shields. It is uh, my great honor to make this motion to approve this resolution as I've known Austin since his Sydney Fen days and he's just a really fine young man. I'm very proud of him and thank you for your Eagle Scout project that helped the hungry in Medina County. And it's my honor, Austin, to second that. Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the resolution? Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coyne. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Resolution 132-22 passes 7-0. Congratulations. <laughs> now at this time, we always ask, what was your, you know, explain your Eagle Scout project so everybody can have an idea. So I chose to do food drives benefiting Feeding Medina County as it helped um, people that were food insecure in the school system and elders and everyone else in Medina County. Um, I chose this because most of my service hours um, to get up to Eagle were, were working at a food pantry, um, Medina United Methodist Church, and I just thought it would be helpful to have food insecurity end. Congratulations again. Next we have resolution 132.22. It's a resolution congratulating, oh, oh, sorry, we did that one. <laughs> Should cross that off. Resolution 133.22, a resolution adopting a tax budget for the city of Medina, Ohio for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2023 and submitting the same to the Medina County Auditor. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Shields. The emergency clause has been requested. I move to add at this time. My second includes emergency clause. <coughs> Discussion on a resolution and emergency clause. Mr. Durham. 
Thank you, Mr. President. This is the tax budget for 2023, the emergency clauses so that it can be timely filed. Thank you. Any further discussion on the resolution and or the emergency clause? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the emergency clause? Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coyne. Yes. <coughs> Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Motion passes 7-0. Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the resolution? Simpson. Yes. Coyne. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Resolution 133-22 passes 7-0. Ordinance 134.22, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute a purchase agreement for approximately 30.05 acres of land located at 2000 Madonna Road, Madonna, Ohio, Madonna County permanent parcel number 033-12A-03-017 for Madonna Missile Airport expansion and operations. <coughs> Move to approve. Second. Discussion, Mr. Huber. Can you make the passage of this ordinance subject to my approval so that I can work in some of the changes in the contract that you and I talked about? Yes, we will. This ordinance authorizes the mayor to sign a contract for purchase of 30 acres of land immediately adjacent to the east side of the Medina Airport for a cost of $550,000. The FAA has been favorably responsive to grant applications that will be made to reimburse the city for 95% of the cost of this purchase. Our engineers who handle the airport operations have examined this land and determined that it is excellent for future expansion of the airport that would allow a better aircraft parking facility, a better sized maintenance facility and corporate hangars. Our airport is considered by almost all the pilots that I've known and people who have used the airport as an excellent feeder facility between Akron Canton and Cleveland Hopkins. It uh, has great approaches from all directions and has good potential to be more self-sufficient if we can achieve this expansion and ultimately expand the runway to 4,000 feet so that we meet insurance minimums for more corporate aircraft. There's a lot of economic, indirect economic benefit from our airport at this time. It can be a lot better if we're able to expand to some extent and Hopefully this, this works well. Thank you, Mr. Shields. Did your motion include uh, subject to the law director's approval? I will amend my motion to include subject to final approval of the law director. My second includes it also. So is there any further discussion as the ordinance has amended with the subject to the law director's approval? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Coin. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Ordinance 134-22 passes 7-0, subject. Or, ordinance 135-22, an ordinance to approve, adopt, and enact current replacement pages to the codified ordinances of the City of Medina, Ohio. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Well, this comes from a yearly update of our codified ordinances through the council offices to incorporate all the replacement pages and changes that were made throughout the various ordinances of the City of Medina. Is there any further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Ordinance 135-22 passes 7-0. Resolution 136-22, a resolution authorizing the mayor to apply for American Rescue Plan Act ARPA funding for the first responder wellness recruitment retention and resiliency grant for the City of Medina Police Department. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Shields. The emergency clause has been requested. I move to add at this time. My second includes emergency clause. Discussion on the emergency clause and the resolution. Chief Kinney. Thank you, Mr. President. This resolution is for permission to apply for the ARPA funding grant. This program is from Governor DeWine's office, and it is specific to officer wellness, recruitment, retention, and resiliency. If we are awarded this grant, we intend on remodeling our Jim down in the basement of the this building here. The grant is in the amount of $142,011. There is no match and this has no impact on our city ARPA funds either. The emergency clause is requested as the grant was due last month. Thank you, any further discussion? 
Was Cook Peach Color Rolling adoption of the emergency clause? Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coyne. Yes. Hare. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Was the Cook Peach Color Rolling adoption of the resolution? Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coyne. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Resolution 136.22 passes 7 0. Ordinance 137.22, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement between Main Street Medina and the City of Medina for Medina TV production services of Main Street Medina programming. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Shields. The emergency clause has been requested. I move to add it this time. My second includes emergency clause. <clears throat> Discussion on the emergency clause and the ordinance. Mayor Hamwell. Thank you, Mr. President. This is a uh, another mechanism for the city to try to bring some outside money to help support our Medina TV operations like we're doing with the uh, Medina County Commissioners. Uh, this is an agreement uh, to, to do some film work uh, and editing for Main Street Medina events for them to use for uh, promotions and, and for their website. Uh, and the request for the emergency clause is so that we can get started uh, sooner and not have the summer go by uh, without the opportunity to gather some of those events. That's our busiest time of year. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on the resolution and or the emergency clause? Will Cook please call the roll on the adoption of the emergency clause? Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Hare? Yes. Hazeltine? Yes. Liam? No. Motion passes 6-1. Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Shields? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Hare? Yes. Hazeltine? Yes. Liam? No. Rose? Yes. Ordinance 137.22 passes 6 yeas, 1 nay. Resolution 138.22, a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an economic development tax transfer form from the Division of Liquor Control for the property located at 220 North State Street. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Shields. The emergency clause has been requested. I move to add it this time. My second includes the emergency clause. Discussion on the emergency clause and the resolution. Mrs. Marshall. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. This request is for um, Pickleback LLC located at 220 North State Street. They have identified a liquor permit that they're requesting to be transferred into the city of Medina. The seller of the liquor license is Sweet Carrot Grandview LLC. They have identified um, that on the form with their permit number. Ohio Revised Code 4303.29 states that a permit can be transferred from one area to another for the purposes of an economic development project. Pickleback LLC has entered into a lease with Common Ground LLC for the real estate at 220 North State Street, which was formerly occupied by the Hollows pa Paper Craft and for the former Pickle Factory. The space has been vacant for approximately one year. Pickleback LLC desires to sell alcoholic beverages at this location. However, the qu quota for liquor permits allowing on-premise consumption in Medina is full. Therefore, Pickleback LLC must purchase the permit and request consent of Medina City officials to the treks in the liquor for the liquor permit. Pickleback LLC will initially employ 10 to 12 people. It will generate income tax for the city of Medina as well as an investment in an underutilized building. And the project timeline is to be up and running in the next three to six months. So we are respectfully requesting council to allow the mayor to sign the attached Ohio Department of Commerce Division of Liquor Control Economic Development Trucks Transfer Form. We are asking for the emergency clause because their attorney, which is Mark Myers, we've worked with Mark Myers on several of these other tra trucks transfer uh, projects. Uh, he's out of Columbus. They have located a seller and they would like to execute a final uh, purchase agreement and on the deal and get it uh, finalized as soon as possible and submit all of the documents to the state of Ohio because I think all of us know that the state of Ohio moves a little slower than us. So we'd like to uh, get this project moving as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on the resolution and or the emergency clause? Will the clerk please call the roll in the adoption of the emergency clause? Simpson? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Hare? Yes. Hazeltine? Yes. Lamb? Yes. 
Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. For the crook, please call the roll on the adoption of the resolution. Shields? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Hare? Yes. Hazeltine? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Resolution 138-22 passes 7-0. Ordinance 139-22, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to advertise for competitive bids and award a contract to the successful bidder for the West Smith Reconstruction Phase 4 project. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Mr. Patton. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this will be our fourth and final phase of the reconstruction of West Smith Road. Uh, it starts just east of State Road and will continue to South Court Street. The entire project uh, is, is estimated to cost $5,096,000. $2,046,590 of that is being provided via a federal grant. Thank you. Any further discussion or comment on the ordinance? This is one of our bigger road projects that we've had in the city for a while, and I'm glad to see we're finally upgrading it. We're excited. Uh, I believe this will be our most expensive road project ever. Okay. Uh, Clerk, please call the roll on the adoption of your ordinance. Coin. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Ordinance 139.22 passes 7-0. Ordinance 140.22, an ordinance of the C Council of the City of Manette, Ohio, certified in that when a municipal obligation was incurred, sums were lawfully appropriated in the funds to satisfy the obligation, and sufficient sums currently exist to satisfy this obligation. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Mr. President. Mr. Shields. The emergency clause has been requested. I move to add at this time. My second includes the emergency clause. Discussion on the emergency clause and the ordinance. Mr. Durham. Thank you, Mr. President. This is what's called a then and now purchase order. It's because of a uh, repair to the railroad that was not anticipated. The emergency clause is because that repair has already been done and we need to pay this vendor as soon as possible. Thank you. Any further discussion on the emergency clause or the ordinance? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the emergency clause. Hair. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hair. Yes. Ordinance 14022 passes 7 0. Ordinance 14122, an ordinance authorizing the increase of expenditure to Winthrow Construction Corporation for the emergency repairs to the city railway. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Mr. President. Mr. Shields. The emergency clause has been requested. I move to add at this time. My second includes the emergency clause. Discussion on the emergency clause and the ordinance. Mr. Patton. <laughs> Thank you. As uh, referenced in the previous discussion, uh, this is for emergency repair of our railroad line. These are actually three different repairs that occurred within a couple of days of each other uh, back in March. Any, any further discussion? Will Cook please call the roll on the adoption of the emergency clause? Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hare. <clears throat> yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Clerk, please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Ordinance 14122 passes 7 0. Ordinance 14222, an ordinance amending chapter 14503 and the adopted Appendix A of the codified ordinance of the City of Manoha relative to the Historic Preservation Board. Move to approve. Second. Discussion, Mr. Dutton. Thank you, Mr. President. These are amendments to uh, Chapter 145, our ordinances for the Historic Preservation Board. Uh, the main purpose is to align the board with our other two planning boards, the Planning Commission and the Board of Zoning Appeals, uh, primarily by uh, adding two alternate members, which will be able to fill in seats if regular members are not available. Uh, it also uh, aligns it with the other boards by prohibiting members from holding another office in the city. Uh, there's a process for removal of a board member and requires three votes to pass a motion. Um, the ordinance also extends possible non-resident members of the board uh, further past professional and academic to other members uh, as there are uh, many landowners and business owners in the district which have a vested interest. Thank you. Any further discussion on the ordinance? Mr. Lamb. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I voted for this in, um, in committee. Um, however, considering that, you know, when you create an historic district, you do it because of the term historic, and it is to protect the buildings that are particular to that defined area, meaning it is an historic district. And it spent it took, in the 1980s, it took six years to create that small nine block historic district. And an historic district is only created to protect the buildings in that space because they have a history. 
therefore the word historic. You do not create an historic district in order to invite developers to come in and tear down the historic buildings to build replicas of the building or Disney buildings. That is not an historic district. And I believe that the city, we tore one down earlier this year that had a history. I believe the city is getting, uh, has gotten approval, I believe, to tear down what may well be the oldest building in town, at least one of five oldest buildings in town, a building that was constructed before anything that we look at on the square existed, a building that, whose foundation was built with river stones from Champion Creek, a building that was fell into disrepair and was sold in disrepair, which is called demolition by neglect, and now will be torn down. No one creates an historic district in order to have developers buy buildings to tear them down and create fake buildings. So my sense is, having been the person who worked for six years to create that historic district and the board that is the Historic Preservation Board, we need to take a look at every single aspect that goes into those decisions and the fundamental, the fundamental components that make up that board and its ability to make decisions, as well as the Board of Appeals, who after one building being denied demolition twice, our own Board of Appeals then allowed that demolition of that building. I think we need to look at that whole, look at that holistically, the whole thing, and maybe rewrite the whole thing and not tinker around with it at the edges anymore. Because you don't have an historic district where you tear the buildings down to put up fake buildings. Maybe we look, need to look at point of sale inspections so that when a developer, when somebody sells a building, it cannot be in such disrepair because they have willfully allowed it to be in that disrepair that the next person that buys it feels they have to turn it down because it's in such bad condition. That should never happen here. Lots of people have been to Williamsburg probably. <clears throat> great place to go visit, lots of great history there. The entire place was built from the foundations of buildings. None of those buildings existed. It was all built from foundations. But what do we do? We're gonna tear them down. It's wrong, and I think we need to revisit this entire, revisit the board, the structure of the board, and their ability to better protect the, the economic engine of our community, which is the historic district. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on the ordinance? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Shields? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Hare? Yes. Hazeltine? Yes. Lamb? No. Rose? Yes. Ordinance 142-22 passes six days, one night. Ordinance 143-22, an ordinance <coughs> amending ordinance number 191-19 passed November 25th, 2019, sections 5.6 and 7.2, the joint operating agreement between the Board of Education of the Banana City School District and the City of Banana, Ohio, relative to the Banana Recreation Center. Moved to approve. Second. Discussion? Mr. Worley? Thank you, Mr. President. This amendment is to increase the capital fund contribution uh, by $10,000 uh, for the next five years, making the total capital contribution at $150,000 for Medina, uh, City of Medina and Medina City School Board. The second amendment is uh, to the utilities that are provided by the school board uh, since the city has installed a new phone system. Uh, therefore, we'll be responsible for the full cost of that utility going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on the ordinance? Mr. Coyne, if I could. Mayor Hamill. So I, I know that most of the council members at least were here when we tried to negotiate with the school to raise it from 100000 to 150000 The building's 20 years old. Um, then through um, Jansen's efforts, Christie's efforts, and some negotiations with the school, they found it more palatable to raise it in $10,000 increments over the next five years, which gets us to the same place just a little bit longer to get there. So I just wanted to share the process that, that we use to try to accomplish this. 
Thank you. Any further discussion? Mr. Coyne. Mr. Shields. Uh, since my employer owns the building that the rec center is housed in, I will be abstaining on this ordinance. Thank you. Any further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of your ordinance? Simpson. Yes. Coyne. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Abstain. Ordinance 143-22 passes six yeas, one abstention. Council comments? Mrs. Hazeltine. Um, I would just like to congratulate Austin. I have also known him for a very long time since our nurturing days together. So I'm very proud of you. You've done a great thing with Feeding Medina County. Um, I'd also like to say I'm glad that we were able to enjoy a peaceful 4th of July in Medina. We're very fortunate in that respect. And other than that, try not to miss us too much over the past or next six weeks. Thank you. Any other council comments? Mr. Rose? Thank you, Mr. President. Austin, congratulations. This is the first time I ever saw you. So, <laughs> it's, a a it's a good thing, Austin. It's a good thing. With some of these other people. But um, having been the uh, uh, committee chairman of Cup Pack 3506 back in the 1900s, I know the work that you've gone through because I've helped uh, some people in the past achieve their, their goal uh, of becoming an Eagle Scout. And uh, I congratulate you on your hard work and keep up the good work because uh, this, this country is sorely going to need leaders like you. So, thank you. All right, and to everybody in the room, have a safe summer. Thank you. Any other council comments? Hearing none, the meeting is adjourned.